Hey there, today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Cura software. So let's say you've got a 3D printer that's anything other than a maker bot. The Cura will probably work for it. So first things first, you're going to need to put Cura on your computer. So to do that, go to a search engine like this one and type in C-U-R-A, Cura. And in this case, it's the first link that comes up. Now, what you do is click on that link and wait for the website to load. And then you click download. And once you've downloaded that, you install it. Simple. I won't be showing you how to install it because that's something you can do yourself. Anyway, once it's installed, load it up. So, Cura. And when the computer gets to it, there we go. Cura is loading up. Now we wait. And here we have Cura. So, in this case, I've already set Cura to the Ultimaker 2. But when you get your Cura, it'll take you through some setup options. So, I will do that for you now. So this is what you'll come to. And you'll click Next, and you'll pick your printer. So you click Other if you've got a homemade one using a ramps board, or one of these are also an option. So we have an Ultimaker 2, so we'll click Ultimaker 2. And when you click that, you'll click Next and it'll save it. But I won't do that because I've already got one. And here we are, an Ultimaker 2 print bed in all its glory. So what do we do with this, you might say? Well, you need to add a file. So what you do is you click Load, and you pick something to print. So I will pick that one. And does that come up with anything? Yes, it does. It comes up with a hand, no less, or a fist. Um, so right now, that's probably not how you'd want to print it. Probably want to move it about. So you use your rotate tool. In this case, you pick the circle you want. You click it and you rotate. You can also do other things like lay flat, and that way it'll move it to the bed just processing the lay flat button and you can wait a moment there we go that only took forever and didn't really work so it's often best to just do it manually um, anyway now that it's laid flat you can do other things so again you have to click on the object for these tools to appear you can scale it using these buttons so I can set it to the maximum size the printer can do there we are uh, and I can reset it back to how it was. You could also do the things manually. And if you want to adjust just one axis of the scale, you just click the padlock and it unlocks. So that's how you deal with scaling. Then you come to your other interesting things like mirroring the object if you want to print multiples. But, you know, that's up to you if you want to print them at the same time. I genuinely wouldn't recommend printing more than one object at the same time because it doesn't take any longer to print them separately than it does to take them at the same time because it's just how it works. So, that's dealing with your object. Now there's other things you can fiddle with, which you have here. So you've got your quality. At this point it's set to 0.1, which is the highest resolution of the Ultimaker. But on this setting, it's going to take forever to print. So generally, if you want something to come out pretty quick, you'll set that to 0.4, which is the lowest resolution the printer will do. Then we have shell thickness. And that's to do with how thick the outer layer or the detail is. 0.8 is generally a good setting, but it, let's say you've got something like a teapot or something that needs to be watertight. You generally make that thicker because you don't want water getting through. Next, we come on to fill. So in this case, that fist isn't going to be printed hollow because it would be quite weak. So what you'll do is you'll increase your fill density to a decent amount. 20% is generally all right and it'll print it with a sort of honeycomb lattice inside. Bottom and top thickness is similar to shell thickness, it just makes it thicker at the bottom and the top. Then we have print speed. So with the Ultimaker, generally a good setting is about 50 to 80. Um, you don't want to go higher because things tend to go wrong. Um, unfortunately the Ultimaker, despite being a very expensive printer, actually isn't the best. Um, but hey ho, you can use the software for other things too which is quite nice. 
then we come on to the important stuff support so here we have the support structure options so right now if we were to print that fist likelihood is certain bits would come out quite badly like the knuckles they'd just be a big old spewy mess of filament so what you need to do is put in some support structures which the software will do yourself but you just have to enable it so what we do is we pick one of these so touching build plate means it'll only put in support structures if the overhang is over the print bed problem with that being though is these knuckles probably wouldn't actually get touched for some part because some of it is actually overlapping the hand so we want it everywhere then we have platform adhesion which actually means a raft and that is basically the thing it's going to print before it prints the object to make sure the object stays stuck down like a, a skin for the table the plate and generally you click raft because brim just puts a line around whereas raft actually prints a lower layer and that's what you want so you'd select raft now you'll notice it's estimated a very long time for printing and that's unfortunate just something the automaker does it's a slow printer compared to say the maker bot even if we whack this right up to really way higher than you'd want to print at with the current automaker you'll see after spending an absolute age calculating which mind you i've got a very decent powerful computer and it takes forever so can you imagine on someone who's got a pentium or a core 2 duo sheesh so anyway while that's processing you'll <laughs> expect some very bad results but what you can see is it actually tells you how much filament you're going to use now this is quite important especially at the hack space because at the hack space we buy in the reels and we cost charge you for the filaments so what you would do is you take the filament length which is 330 meters for or uh, one kilogram and that's 30 pounds so divide 30 pounds for th by 330 or by 1000 and then you times it by 15 for meters or 119 for grams and that gives you how much filament you're using um, then you add a little bit on top which we specify when you print just to cover the cost of the printer and stuff so yeah uh, there's not much else to say right now you can oh yeah I should take you through right click allows you to pan scroll wheel allows you to zoom in and out clicking the scroll wheel does the same thing and left click just selects stuff so it actually doesn't do anything other than select things and you'll notice now that I've done that it's already reset the processing which is a little bit annoying so what I'm going to do now is take you on to some of the other tabs so we have advanced stuff so that sets the nozzle size you'll never change that unless you actually mechanically change the nozzle that the printer is using then you have some other settings that again you're not really going to want to touch because you could very badly destroy your print um, the only one you might touch is this one which is basically it sets a minimum time per layer so if you're printing a very small object it could print faster than the layers are cooling down which means your object could shrink or warp so you, you increase that to make sure that the stuff has time to cool down but if you're printing a really small object that doesn't need cooling down that can hugely increase your print time so yeah watch out for that one and then this tab you won't really touch so yeah that's it that's everything that you will really need to know so what we're going to do now is pause the video and wait for that to finish processing and here we are it's finished processing and look at literally more than doubling the print speed we haven't halved the time oh dearie dear well you know what that's just how it is with an automaker <laughs> they're shiny though they do light up which is nice but yeah, thank you for watching and good luck with your print.